Hi, so this section with Venn diagrams is super cool. <laughs> and so um, John Venn is actually a mathematician <laughs> and philosopher, and he decided to do graphical representation of our sets. And in fact, Euler was kind of the first with Euler diagrams, which we're going to do in the next chapter with logic. But Venn diagrams, it, the word Venn itself will be capitalized, and that's not for fanciness. That's just because that's the last name of the person who invented Venn diagrams. And we use Venn diagrams so often in our life and society and like just looking up data and just seeing how elements are drawn. Okay, so a Venn diagram is just a representation of sets with the universal set, um, as just like gra just drawn. So, um, and we're going to do a whole f a few cases. So, the first thing we want to talk about is what is a Venn diagram exactly. So, a Venn diagram represents each set in, and the universal set um, drawn inside a rectangle. And so, we have to we have to have the rectangle that represents the universal set. Other than that, you just have circles. But the moment you put a rectangle around your circles, boom, it becomes a Venn diagram. Because we don't want to confuse this with the Euler diagrams that we're going to discuss later on. So Venn diagrams are circles with a rectangle. And then we overlap circles where we have intersections. Okay, so let's look at a couple. So the first one we want to do is um, if we have sets A and B and we do the union. So the union would be this rectangle and then with two sets A and B where the rectangle itself is the universal set so we put designate it with a capital U and we label each set A and B and they overlap a little like this so you have that intersection if we want to shade the union that means we take everything right in A B or in or both so we take A B or both it would be those two circles so let me go ahead and shade that So shading the union would look like that. And the universal set is every out there, the white space here, it's just every, all the elements in the universal set that aren't in A or B, right? It's the complement of the union. Okay, so the second part would be the sets A and B being the intersection. So A intersection B. And so um, you would take the same figure, see if I can do it. and two circles and I know some of you are art majors and I'm sure your circles are like so beautiful but I have to use like at the cheat and use like this uh, formatted circle <laughs> but I'm sure some of you freehand beautiful circles okay so a B in the universal set we label usually in a corner it's top right or bottom right and the intersection are elements that have to be in both so they're right here in this little leaf so let's go ahead and shade that okay and then the other part was the complement remember so a complement we could do um, or B complement so if we did a complement I'll show you this real quick And then let me go ahead and draw another one, copy, and put it over here. And so um, A complement, so here's set A and set B universal, set A, set B universal. So A complement here we go, would be everything not in A, everything in the universal set that's not in A. So everything that's not in A would be everything around it. 
but I remember I'm not including puppies in peanut butter, right? I'm not including anything. It has to be within the universal set. So that could include elements from B, right? But just not an A. Don't do A. Notice that you're like, but part of B is an A. Yes, that's true. They do share some sort of intersection right here. But it doesn't matter. The whole set A, nothing can be an A, even if it's shared. Because if it's shared, it's still an A. So you've got to get it out. So B complement would be similar, and I'll do that in blue, where it's everything in the universal set that's not in B. So everything around it. And some of you may say, well, no, I don't see it because some of this in here is part of A. No, it's also in part of B, and it can't be touched. If it's not in B, then it's not there in the intersection as well. So we have to be very careful with that. Okay, so um, the other piece um, is maybe more than one set. That would be the last part. So you would have like more of a square because you got to fit a third set in. And you have three circles. So you draw A and B typically the same way. But then below it you add like this C set, the third set. So you have A, oops, A, B, C. And the universal set still holds. So technically the intersection of all three is right there. Right, that's A intersection B intersection C. And the union, which I can do maybe like right, that would be A union B union C. And then you can have any sort of combinations. If you want A intersection B, that's this piece here. B intersection C, A intersection C, right? If you want the complement of B, that would be everything not in B like that, right? So it all still works, it's just how to draw it. So when we draw the Venn diagram, let's say for A union B intersection C complement, I think the first thing we should probably do is draw the Venn diagram And we'll draw it really big and with three circles. All right, A, B, C, and with the universal set right here. Great, so I think the first part we want to do is um, we're going to shade one at a time. I think the first thing we want to shade is we need to shade and working um, left to right. So let's go ahead and shade A union B as we saw up here. So A union B would be this. So um, if I go ahead and shade, I'm just going to shade lightly. And I think what I'll do is use possibly a gray to shade A union B. And I'll do it like this. And again, I'm doing A union B. So let me use a gray highlighter. So the A union B would be these two pieces, right? Not So some of C is not in there, but because we have intersection with C and B and then independently C and A, that a little bit of C is in there by default. But we're just looking at the two circles of A and B. So um, let me go ahead and do that. The next part I would do is now look at C complement. So I would look at all the elements not in C and shade. Okay, so now let me go ahead and grab maybe a purple color and not in C. So if I take the highlighter of purple, that means it's everything outside of this. Right, it's like me, that's why I always, I always do it in a highlighter. If you have highlighters, that's really well, or colored pencils. Because I always like color the perimeter 
of the compliment and I notice go outwards. You know what I mean? Like I, if I go shade it, if I don't outline, I want to shade in, right? So if I shade it and go out for compliment, shade in for um, in intersection, you know? So, I mean, for the sets to be included. So that's what that looks like. Now, if I look at Now, if I look at the set, look at the union of A and B and intersect it with C complement, right, and shade, shade the solution. So here's the A union B, and C complement is this purple sun shining out of there. Now, if I go, if I look down here, I can see that there's no overlap with gray, right? Because A union B is up here. So none of this down here will be included. But I do see A union B up here. But notice down here, this piece here is included in C, right? This little leaf here. So that ha does not have any purple in it, does it? The purple starts outside of C because of the complement. So this is not going to be included in the solution, right? Because I'm looking for anything outside of C but intersected with that union. So now I can see a little bit clearer and say, hey, this is the union piece but minus that part that little, little, two little leaves that belong to C. And this is A, A union B intersection with C complement. So no, notice none of the C is shaded in blue because I can't include it. It was never included, right? It was the complement of C that was included. It was everything outside of C. And then if I intersect that with the union of A and B, I do see some overlap between gray and purple, and therefore the blue is the solution. So it just takes practice, but my goal for you is to identify the basic ones that we have that we drew up here first, you know, start at one of them like we did here and then shade lightly, use color pencils or use a pencil with, you know, pressure light to dark and then shade darker in the area in which is the complete solution. And that's really what it's about. So it's great practice um, to be able to take the written set language and make it into a picture and then we kind of see both sides.